Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, this is video 684, which at the moment I'm thinking about calling it I've had too much reality or stop the world I want to get off. I don't know. I um, just feel very overwhelmed um, with reality right now. Uh, I just watched the um, Netflix documentary um, called Disclosure uh, about trans folk and how trans folk have been depicted in TV and movies and the, the, the short of it is that you know most people in the world don't know a trans person personally so their mental image their perception of what it is to be trans is basically from what's on TV and movies and you know it doesn't take too much brain power to realize that you know TV and movies is not reality uh, but that's what people have you know associated with it and uh, the, the documentary is unique to me in that it it's featured all trans folk, you know, male to female, female to male, non-binary speaking. But I noticed that, with the exception of of um, I think Lana, not Lana Wiskowski. I'm I'm sorry, I don't know her name. Um, they were all skinny people. They were all ectomorphic, <clears throat> and it, you know it. It really kind of, and, and then I thought about it, and I was like, well, but to to be a movie star or a TV star, you've got to be good looking, you know. And uh, when you think of good looking, in 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 light of transgender, um, you know, for women, for male to females. For trans women, you really got to have an ectomorphic frame to begin with, you know. And then, if you're if you're skinny and lengthy, um, you know your your frame is light. And then, as that person does hormones, uh, their body, you know, whatever body mass redistributes, and they put on a little bit of weight from the estrogen. They have a female form, and I would imagine to guess that uh, probably a little bit of additions, uh, breast implants, and whatever else, you know, whatever body work has been done, uh, facial feminization, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, I, I guess what was being paraded as transgender was such an idyllic trans woman and I, and I apologize for being so trans woman centric and um but that's my experience and that's the the channel is one trans well it's one trans at middle age but oh let me pause I got hang on uh there we go I'm learning how to pause videos instead of stopping them um, so I'm trying to think what I was, what I was talking about was, you know, it, it was like Hollywood. And again, I, I guess it makes sense now that I think about it, you would show, excuse me, you would show beautiful and, and, and I'm going to say trans women who, um, if they didn't talk, you, you would just assume it was a woman it was a cis woman you know that's how that's the degree to which they have done body work and surgery and whatever else I mean they're movie stars they're on TV people people want to see them you know who wants to see me you know um, <laughs> I, I don't look at myself in mirrors and obviously I've, I've gained so much weight my surgery actually I've lost three pounds if I could brag about that but anyway um you know so the, the more i watched the video the more i was like 
it, you know, it, it it was good. It's it's a good. It's a definitely a good first start, and and maybe a second or a third start. I mean, definitely was was pretty cool. And and you know if if a person is so blessed with a, a, a an a, an ectomorphic body, and they're gonna look beautiful, and particularly if they they were young when they started hormones and all that other stuff, or they've had the 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 finances to do a, like I said a lot of post a lot of post work. Um, but it it just you know it, not to discredit what they were saying. It just like I said, it was like. You know, I, I I saw. Like I said, they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. It's something I I would aspire to, if I was younger, but not something that I I I'm I'm. There's no way I could come close. You know, not to say that I want to, but you know, it was just part of me. It was like, well, that's pretty cool. And you know, something that I had kind of uh, talked about earlier with you know, trans women in the, the media, um, you know, is being either, you know, something to get a reaction out of a guy, you know, let me show you, like I said, let me show you this beautiful woman that it's going to give you a heart on. And then while you, you're, you're fantasizing about having sex with her, I'm going to tell you it's a guy with a dick, you know, and it's, it's like that shock value. Um, or, you know, it's a heart story, and I, I liked how they, you know, they they showed the different trans women, and every time they got interviewed, it was it was talking about the surgery, it wasn't talking about their lives, and they all asked, well, what do you do with your penis, you know, and and so you your sex, I mean, it, you know, it's it's, um, and I liked the response. I think it was Laverna Cox who said something about. You know, when you do that, you objectify the person. And I think it's true, you know. But watching the the documentary, it really, you know, it showed a lot of, a lot of things that, that I encountered growing up that was like how I found out about trans women or transgender, that it was even possible, you know, that there were other people like me and, and you know, the TV shows and, and whatever. You know, again, it was it was kind of like I was happy to see it, but then it brought back memories and, and times of, of, of being uncomfortable. You know, my own self-doubt, my own shame, my own guilt guilt you know watching these things and and times in my life that I put myself on hold because I didn't understand what was going on and you know I I, I said I kind of it's like um I don't know I was glad to see it but then it was like pulling scabs off of wounds and flexing you know parts of my body that had broken bones that had healed and now I'm like, yeah, and, you know, I thought somewhat about the future, you know, the way things are going, I mean, it's it's the hope of it, the hope is that it, it's, you know, trans folk are, are uh, they lose the shock factor, you, we lose the, 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 uh, the otherness, you know, and, and it becomes commonplace, for lack of a better word, and you know everything's cool and kind of it made me realize that you know uh people that have the experience that i had uh are kind of a dying breed you know if if we get to the point that society becomes better and better and better then those of us who encountered the strife the strife and the unpleasantness and everything we're going to get less and less you know, can you imagine that? And one thing that really struck out, there was a girl near the end who talked about, you know, she had uh, was part of a panel or something, and uh, or had seen something about a father and the father and and the uh, the father of a trans child, and he, the father talked about how amazing his child was and how he 
he really appreciated the child and how what a unique situation it was and what a wonderful thing it was and the, the trans woman was like you know here i was in my own life accepting the fact that my own family uh has distanced themselves and cut them off from me you know here i was all i wanted was acceptance she said it and now here's this other guy who's like gone beyond acceptance and encouragement and love and you know support that she she didn't think possible and she's like you know i want that for myself you know and and so that kind of brought up a lot of um you know things that i remembered and in my own life um the year that i really came to terms with myself was uh 1990 and they touched in the the documentary about the film Paris is Burning and I can remember <clears throat> going to the therapist at Georgia Tech where I was a student and saying you know I'm transgender I am a woman I am I'm a I'm tra I'm a trans woman and this is what I want and and he and I I said uh you know the experience the freedom of expression like in Paris is burning and I the psychologist just totally shot me down and shut me up you know he reinforced the the negative the the things that I had heard all my life that kept me down that kept me shackled that kept me th thinking that I was a freak uh, that I was an abomination the psychologist reinforced that and made me go back into my cave and you know back into my I mean he uh, he did a lot of damage I mean it seemingly seemingly did a lot of damage and I you know to watch it in the movie the documentary it just it brought a lot of pain and and queasiness back up and like I said I'm I'm glad it's there but man it it really brought up some dark brought up some dark times and um you know we i, I hope you know i hope th I, that's i guess the hope for anybody you hope that the future generations you know they don't encounter the same stress and suffering that you did you can hope that things get better and better for every generation and I, and I can only think of the people who came before me and the suffering that they did you know um, so I guess that's really all I have to say about that but if you if you catch it if you want if you're interested I think it's pretty neat it goes back and talks about the history of uh, trans folk in film and some TV stuff, and and like I said, the, the all the people in it are transgender. It's not someone talking about how transgender people think. It is transgender people sharing their thoughts and their views. Um, so, so that's half of this video. The other half it's got me thinking about. I made mention yesterday that there was a study that was done, and uh, out of like 958 people um, 16 people said that they would be they would consider dating a trans woman uh, which equates to be 1.7 percent if you divide it out and it just made me it, it started to make me get a little bit of a pity party I'll be honest with you a little bit of a pity party you know thinking about you know will I ever meet someone and that that came up in the video too maybe they are more related the, the idea of disclosure they talked about um, disclosure in a relationship at what point do you uh, if you're in a relationship and there's a guy and a gal at what point does the gal say to the guy, you know, I'm trans, I'm transgender, just want to let you know. And something that the woman, she's the same woman, she's very smart, um, you know, said something about, you know, it, it sets up the premise that being trans is somehow some kind of dark secret that you have to hide. Or it makes the fact that you're transgender something that you have to share with someone else. 
you know, something from your past. Uh, you know, you, you could meet someone and talk, you know, when you have the, when you meet someone and you talk for a couple hours, I guess it's not really flirting, but a lot of conversation. Oh, well, I'm from this place and I did that. And we, well, where are you from? You know, what did you do? You know, da, 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 da. Uh, there's a lot of things in our lives we don't bring up, you know. Um, and, you know, at what point do you say, oh, and I, I'm transgender, you know, and maybe, you know, smart thing to do is to right off the bat, you know, just so you know, I'm transgender. I, I don't know. I've, I've not been in that situation yet. Not in real life. Um, but, you know, it, it made me doubtful. It made me doubtful. It made me think about, you know, um, and it explains a lot too, because I've, I did Yahoo Dating and I did eHarmony. Remember eHarmony, the dude from eHarmony? This is Dr. Philip Warren from eHarmony with 13 points of identification. And we, we, we combine, we, you know, did, 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 we, we, you know, they don't say they guarantee to find you a mate, but, um, you know, I had no eHarmony for this chick, this woman. Um, and I did Yahoo, and I did something. I did like three or four personals last year, and I the only hits that I got were people that made me afraid to leave my house. Um, there were guys who just what little profile they had, yeah, incompatible, you know, incompatible. Um, so it really made me. And we'll get more on that in a minute, too. It made me really doubtful. Number one, like I said, that I'd find somebody. You know, and in this study, if we had, you know, a room full of 958 people, uh, and we, out of that 958, we had our long-ass conversation. We talked about our histories and our past. And it came up, and I said, oh, and by the way, John, or by the way, Phil, or by the way, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm transgender. Do you still want to pursue me, or do we still want to pursue a relationship? You know, only 16 people are going to say, "I'll think about it. I'd consider it." You know, 1.7 percent, and that's quite a blow to the ego. That's quite a blow to begin with, and and you know, of those 16, like I said. Uh, how many of those, uh, you know, what, what are the odds that we're going to be compatible on a, on a regular uh, set of questions? You know, they could be vegetarian. I love barbecue ribs. Uh, uh, they could be a born-again Christian. I'm a Druid. <laughs> you know, what, how are we, what are the real, real odds? What is the real, st what's the real probability, I guess, is what I'm driving to. That we're gonna we're gonna hook up, and it's very very low. It's it's definitely less than 1.7 percent. Um, I'll tell you that much. And you know, part of that too, and I guess this will be the last bit, is my own quest for my identity and what I want. You know, uh, part of being in stage three here. What what am I looking for? in a person. What am I looking for? Am I am I looking for a woman? Am I looking for a guy? You know, I I tend to think I'm looking for a guy because I've I was married to a woman for 12 years and uh I don't want to repeat that. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, would it be different as a lesbian? I I I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I I I envision you know what what am i and and that's part of this journey and that's why i always say find out for yourself discover for yourself what you who you are your authentic self but you know i i can look at yahoo personals and you know it's 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 like i go no 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 not interested not interested not interested not interested and and, and unfortunately uh, or fortunately, I mean, as it is, the majority of personals that I find on like Yahoo and whatnot, the guys don't go into a whole hell of a lot of detail about themselves. 
you know, Mark, 42 years old, have one child. You know, they don't say what they're into. They don't say what hobbies they have. They, they don't share their likes or dislikes. You know, they take a picture of themselves in the bathroom with their shirt off. And it's like, you know, Dave, Phil, you know. And so it's like, you know, not interested. So how, how, to what degree is my own choosiness and my own inability to tell what I like and what I don't like, how, how limiting is that going to be on that factor? You know, if we can say it's, it's 1.2% or 0.8% now because I'm such a picky person or I don't know what I like, um, you know, you're only going to do it if you do it in, uh, you know, what, uh, circumstance, you know, uh, <laughs> right now I'm, I'm starting to actually have a life again. I, I got a new job and the majority of my time is, uh, uh, the majority of my time is when I come home at night, I'm tired. And I mean, you know, h how am I going to meet Mr. Wright if I stay in my house? You know what I mean? I, I have to leave my house. I have to do things. And uh, so there's that. And then, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic that could be years you know, so it, it could be years before I meet Mr. Wright, you know, and, uh, and, and as I've alluded to in the past too, with my daughter, my daughter is my focal point. Um, you know, she doesn't go away to college for five years. So, you know, I, I may very well, as far as an optimal situation, it could be five or six years till I find somebody and granted we we never know what's gonna happen we never know what's gonna happen uh, I thought about this morning you know I'm my job obviously for the moment my job and my daughter are keeping where me where I'm at but when I retire some 20 years from now if I should be so fortunate to live so long um, you know I might pack it up and go to Colorado which is where I really want to go live and maybe that's where I'm going to meet Mr. Wright. You know, maybe Mr. Wright's in Colorado and Mr. Wright, you know, so why do I even have the, the, the expectation that I'm going to meet somebody, you know? Um, so it's, it's very hard. It's very hard to, uh, it's very hard to, it, it, like I said, I, I feel like with the, the documentary, I kind of got a slap and a, pulled some open, some wounds that were, you know, some old wounds got flexed. And then the data last night about the, um, you know, the dating thing. And right now, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm so tired of the virus. And to a degree, I'm tired of protests and and everything it's like you know I, I just want to be left alone you know and it doesn't mean I don't care it's just like I, I've had too much too much reality too much too much reality right now so that's where I'm at that's where I'm at just just alive and here and I'm glad that I'm alive that's that's better that's better than where I was where are we at? Six. God got a strike. Way to go! <laughs> uh, you know, life is definitely better, but... I don't know. I don't know, my friends. Uh, best of luck to you, I guess that's all I can say. And best of luck to each of us. I, uh, like I said, I've just had too much reality right now, and if you have a chance, I suggest watching the documentary. It's pretty cool. 
uh, in light of what I've said, <laughs> lots of skinny looking trans women who look really good uh, talking about uh, what it means to be transgender. <sighs> the rest of the world moves on. All right. Till next time. Good luck. Bye-bye.